As if y'all haven't heard enough of me, here we go. Constitution stuff that I would know. Oh, man. We looked at the Constitution. The Constitution was written because the Articles of Confederation, which none of you have ever heard of, was a failed attempt of a government after the Revolutionary War. The Articles of Confederation, if I really want to scroll up and waste our time, is the following. Congress couldn't tax. Congress couldn't regulate trade. Congress, there was nothing that anyone could do. It was hard to pass laws. It just didn't work at all. Weak national government, no currency for the United States. Each state had one vote. It just, it failed. All right, 1787, we have a Constitutional Convention. George Washington's president of the Constitutional Convention. James Madison writes the Constitution. And here we go. It's broken up into a preamble and seven articles and 27 amendments. The Constitution, here we are, the preamble. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do or stand and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. What it's saying is, we, the United States, want to make a better country. We want to have law and order, equal justice. We want to have domestic tranquility, peace amongst the citizens. We want to have the common defense, a military to protect us, promote the general welfare, ensure that all citizens are equal and have general welfare, and that the blessings of liberty, freedom, goes to ourselves, us, and our posterity, la door and we want to create this constitution. These are the seven goals. If you think about it, they wrote a preamble to introduce the constitution, and it just lists out the seven goals. Oh, look, we, the people of the United States, in order to form... Oh, my God, that's my tie, and it's written on license plates. You can watch this School of Rock video, which is a preamble. It's pretty fun. Article 1 of the Constitution. We have seven articles. The first three articles are the three branches of government. No one branch is more powerful than the other, but they all have different powers. Article 1 is the legislative branch, which is the opposite of progress. Congress! It's my joke. The legislative branch is Congress. This is where they work, the Capitol building. They are made up of two houses, which is bicameral. The House of Representatives, which benefits the bigger states in population, and the Senate, which benefits the littler states in population. Well, here's what we got. In the House of Representatives, you have to be a minimum of 25 years old, you have to be a citizen of the United States for seven years, you serve two-year terms, and there are 435 of them. It's based off population. So. The House of Representatives is considered the lower house because there's more of them and they don't serve that long. Two years, they're in and they're out. They're in and they're out. It's 2022, and so we're going to see 435 members of the House of Representatives be either reelected or they'll be fired. In the Senate, which is the upper house, you must be 30 years old. You have to live in the United States for nine years as a citizen, and you serve six years, and there's only 100 of you, two per state. So Wyoming and California have the same power in the Senate. The Senate benefits the littler states. Now, here's something to think about. This is what Congress looks like. I mean, the House of Representatives as of 2020. If you look at Florida, Florida's got 28 votes. Georgia's got 14 votes. Okay. Montana, a whopping two. And the Dakotas, a whopping one. That shows us how many votes they have in the House of Representatives. So the House of Representatives benefits states like California, who's got 52 people that vote, and 38 people in Texas, 28 people in Florida, and 14 people in Georgia. Whereas states like Montana, Idaho, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, again, the Dakotas, Nebraska, they don't even equal up California, so they don't have a whole lot of say. But the thing is, if you look down here below, there are slightly more Democrats than the Republicans in the Congress, but that will change quite possibly, and I mean the House. And the reason why it's 435 is because it's divided up the United States into 435 different districts of the United States. The red is Republican. The Democrats are blue. And then this is what the Senate looks like. The blue indicates that there's two Democratic senators. The ones that look like a Vineyard Vines tie, the blue and red, indicates that one senator is from the Democratic Party and one is from the Republican Party. If you look at the Christmas tree up here, which is Maine, that means that there's an independent, and that means that there's a Republican, and then in Vermont there's an independent, and then there is a Democrat. So that kind of gives you an idea what's going on. Now, the House of Representatives has a Speaker of the House. That means the person that runs the House of Representatives. Right now, it's Nancy Pelosi. She's a fossil from California, and she's a Democrat. She is third in line if Biden and Harris croak it, because that she would be the third person to be president. 
Now, the first branch of government is the Congress or legislative branch for the simple reason is that it is the largest branch and it is also the branch most directly associated with the people. We as the citizens vote for Congress, so they represent us. We are directly related to them. Now, again, as I mentioned this, the House of Representatives benefits the bigger states in population. The Senate represents the littler states because Wyoming is equal to California, which is so cool. Now, looking through here, we're going to get to some powers, and we're also going to look at how a bill becomes a law and the powers of Congress and powers denied to Congress and the legislative branch being the first we just looked at. Now, if we scroll down, here are some of the powers of Congress. Congress can raise and collect taxes. That means they collect taxes from the states and the people. They can borrow money from the credit of the United States. So like if I want to give the Congress money for a bond, I can do that. They regulate commerce, which is a big word for trade. The states don't regulate trade between nations. That'd be ridiculous. So the Congress regulates trade between the United States and other countries like Canada and Israel. Okay, they also set up naturalization laws. So the naturalization process of becoming a citizen, you go through Congress. They coin money, which means they print money. Well, they sort of print money. They determine who goes on the bills. They change the way it looks because they want to make sure that no one's counterfeiting the money. And if people counterfeit the money, Congress gets to punish them too. Congress also sets up post offices. So if you live in 30342, you live in the 42nd district of the, there you go. So they set up the post offices. So they're the ones who select our mail. And they create post roads, the roads that go between post offices. They also grant copyrights and patents. They prevent people from being copy, from being their intelligence stolen. So like Apple created the MacBook. Dell can't create a MacBook because that's copyright. And patent, if I invent something like, I don't know, an electric spaceship, then I have the rights to that. So if you try to copy that, you can't. I have the rights. Congress can declare war, which is interesting. They get to write up the declaration of war. And then the other, uh, the other branch of government, the president, he accepts it. They also punish pirates on the high seas, yar, which is relevant. Yes, there are still pirates. Remember, 1700s, boats going from Great Britain to France to America. People were capturing the boats and Captain Phillips. And they also have what's called the Elastic Clause. If for some reason something in crazy happens, Congress has to have the ability to write the laws that are necessary and proper for the time. 9-11 happened. The TSA was created immediately, right? So certain things like that happen, and we need to be able to draft laws immediately. That gives you an idea about what Congress does. That's a lot of powers. Now, they also have a lot of powers denied. They can't, po they can't pass ex post facto laws. Ex post facto means you can't make something illegal at the time when it's legal and punish them. So, for example, I think I just said it backwards. If you did something two years ago and it was legal and now it's made illegal, you can't be punished for it. You can only be punished for crimes committed at the time to which they happen. So if something happens tomorrow that makes something you did today illegal, that's okay because what you did today was legal when you did it. Tomorrow it's illegal, so don't do it. That's ex post facto. Remember, ex, ex-girlfriend, a girlfriend I don't have anymore. Post, post season, after the season. So you can't punish from before. They also can't suspend habeas corpus. Habeas corpus means you must be informed of what you're being arrested for, and you must also be seen before a trial before you're thrown in jail. You can't just get arrested and thrown in jail without being told what you did, nor can you just be held in jail without going to trial. So Congress can't suspend it, meaning Congress can't say, all right, let's just start arresting people. We're suspending habeas corpus. That's not how that works at all. That's not how it works at all. Now, also want to point out, that Congress, there are powers that are denied to the states. In Article 1, there are powers denied to the states. States cannot make treaties with other nations because they're states. They also can't make treaties with each other. So like Georgia can't go, all right, North Dakota, let's make a treaty. They can't do that. States also are not allowed to declare war. That's very highly frowned upon. So that makes the Civil War kind of illegal. The state governments can't print their own money, which that wouldn't make sense anyways. They also are not allowed to create an army or navy. 
They're not allowed to declare war. They can't make treaties with other nations. It kind of feels like the states can't do what the federal government wants to do, which makes sense. Now, the last thing I want to point out is how a bill becomes a law, and that's on the board. A bill may begin in either House of Congress. Step one, a bill may begin in either House of Congress. Step two, a bill needs a simple majority in both houses of Congress. So the Senate needs a simple majority and the House of Representatives needs a simple majority. If the bill receives a simple majority in both houses of Congress, it goes to the president. If the president signs the bill, that becomes a law. If the president vetoes the bill, that means it goes back to Congress. Hey, Bill, how's it going, Bill? A vetoed bill goes back to Congress and they need two thirds vote in Congress to override the veto. So... To override a presidential veto, super hard. To get a bill passed, I mean, super hard, too, because you're not going to have people agreeing on everything that's going to be passed in Congress, but it's kind of how that goes. Well, there is your little podcast on Congress, and I would know all the things I just said. Hope you enjoyed this little flick.